important you want to get your workflow going, you should quickly just be able to open up the task group that you saved and it'll open up all the tabs in their right location uh, and space. Now you've got this person playing Connect 4 and this person using the keyboard. This is Fortnite, this is the default kind of settings uh, and you can see frame rate is really low. You can actually even uh, star things. So for example, if I start this section here, it comes up as a little star there and I can tick that. What's up guys, I want to come back to the TK Tech video and this is part two, no that's four, part two of the Asus Zenbook Duo 2024 laptop review. Now I've done my unboxing already, had a quick look at the designs of this laptop, um, so check that out, the link will be somewhere at the top and also in the description below. Um, so please do check that out if you've not already seen that video because that kind of goes through the well, the design of the laptop and, and kind of the main features of it. But in this video, I just want to delve into some additional features, uh, kind of like show you guys how I've been using the laptop. Um, and I'm going to split this into three categories. Productivity, or how I've been making most of the dual displays, but also maybe some potential other ways you could also make most of it. Talking about gaming, because you know that might be a consideration. So I grabbed myself one of these, uh, basically an Xbox controller, and I've been testing out mainly just a couple of games uh, just to see how they perform. And also lastly is the pen input. So if you remember this thing has two huge displays, all of both of them touch screen, and it comes with a pen. So, you know, it deserves to be tested out properly. All right, so let's start off with productivity. Now I've taken this laptop out a few times in public and no one's been any the wiser that it's got a whole nother laptop just underneath this keyboard. I honestly, I'll tell you now, so many people ask me, why, why, why would you ever need two displays? You don't realize you need two displays until you, until you need two displays. So, so let's talk about multitasking. That is, I guess, the main uh, advantage of it. So for example, how many of us need to have an Excel spreadsheet open? We put it to the side. Uh, we might want to have a Word document open and we put that to the side. And look, that works. If you've got a wide uh, monitor with, the, with this kind of aspect ratio, you know, it works and it fits. Right, and that's what a lot of people do. However, the benefit is that you have that additional display. It takes a second to kind of turn on. Sometimes the animations are a little bit juttery, um, but uh, now what we can do, now you can see is, instead of having it like this, we can grab that and we can use these two displays interchangeably. So to, to make it easier, they've got this toggle right here at the top. So for example, if you hover over one, that's the first display, and you can quickly choose to have it as like a corner, half a screen, another, like a landscape half, or you can choose to have it as display number two. So for example, I can quickly put it in display number two and have it in the bottom right corner and bam, it just pops there. Another cool feature that they have is the quick uh, kind of just like swipe down. So you can either just do it with a mouse where you just swipe it down like that, or you can use a finger and just swipe it up. So it, it does try to make it as easy as possible um, so that it doesn't become cumbersome for anyone to do that. So. This is something I've done a lot, especially maybe not with Excel so much, but just definitely with like, um, for example, when I'm making a PowerPoint presentation. So let's say I've got PowerPoint up, but then obviously when you're making a PowerPoint, you probably need to do your research as well. And this makes it super duper, duper easy. And I wouldn't have thought that I would have been a fan having these two displays on top of each other. And people have said that they find it a bit weird, but I just find it super intuitive and easy to use. So you can quickly drag and drop text, uh, images, uh, so for example, let's drag this image here. It, it ju it's just been incredible at actually increasing the productivity of what I do. It makes it so much easier. I don't feel like I'm closing and opening tabs as much as I used to. We did briefly mention last time that there were other ways that Asus advertised, I guess, kind of using it. So one of them was in this portrait mode and I did recommend doing it like that. So you could slap your keyboard here and, and do your work that way. You know, so let's, for example, get Excel open again. It probably might be better something like that especially for things like if you're a coder this kind of f format would probably be better for you but it's just incredible how it works and actually you can do this one more thing if i grabbed for example this internet page i mentioned how there are these two toggles at the top but there's also this massive expand one and all that will do is spread it across both pages so now it this acts as one display so if you're using a particular software interface where you need that larger extended display and you don't mind having a little bit of a gap right in the middle and you know that's interrupting your tesla picture this is potentially a solution for you now you can also use it all displays to, to like for example have like a, a home working setup so let's say for example you know you want to put your excel spreadsheet up here you know you might want to throw your email uh in the bottom right you might want to have your calendar maybe in the bottom top corner this is me pushing the productivity use to the absolute max 
And just for giggles, uh, you know, you might have to do some calculations. So let's get a calculator up and let's slap that in the bottom right as well. So now you've got your calculator, your calendar, your mail, uh, and your Excel spreadsheet here at the top. And let's say this is your system. This is your work layout that you want to be able to quickly access at a click of a button. What I can do is go over to this here and I can actually set that as a task group. What that does is that kind of like captures all of the tabs that you have open here. So it's recognized we've got Excel open here. Um, although it's messed about with the layout a little bit. Okay, there you go, sorted. Didn't capture it right first time, but you can play around with it as well just to get it right. So what that should mean is that after I close everything, now when you wanna get your workflow going, you should quickly just be able to open up the task group that you saved and it'll open up all the tabs in their right location uh, and space. There are also some uh, virtual input features here. So the virtual input are, are, are the, basically the features you can do without the keyboard. So for example, getting the keyboard up, this is a virtual keyboard. Let's say you don't want to have a full scale keyboard. You can you can bring it down to a half display and have the second half as, as a screen. So that's also really good as well. That kind of is reminiscent of the previous Asus Duo, which had a physical keyboard down here and only had a screen in the top corner. So if you want to replicate that, you can. And actually there are some additional kind of features you can do. So um, I can get a quick key, open up, quickly access, uh, like cut, copy, paste, undo have a set number key up here and there's also the control panel which you can customize so this control panel uh, has various buttons like a mute button screen capture button it has this dial here at the moment it's set to volume but you can customize all of that and you know do whatever you want to your heart's content um, so they really tried to in fact they've even got one for handwriting if you are super adamant that you don't want to use a keyboard god forbid so in here whatever i write let's say i write 27 it inputs that I, I don't know why that's there let's let's ignore that one um but the rest are, are kind of cool now this toggle also has additional other features so it has a sharing mode we briefly discussed that we didn't really discuss it i just kind of mentioned it in the last video but the sharing mode basically allows you to uh, either duplicate the display to to a person sitting opposite you or you can basically use these two displays wholly independently and it will flip it in the right orientation. It's, it's designed mainly to help, for example, if you had a PowerPoint up here. So let's, for example, get this PowerPoint up this way. Theoretically, uh, I can be going through my PowerPoint here at the bottom and then the other person is seeing the full presentation. I think I thought that was quite cool. But what I also realized is that although it seems to be advertised as a presenting kind of feature, you can use it to play a game. So for example, here I've got uh, a game called well, Four in a Row. Uh, the great thing about it is that now these two players can sit opposite each other uh, and then individually play the game. And now that is probably not what it's designed for or intended for, but really, really cool. But not only that, if you really wanted to, uh, you could have two different people playing two completely different games. Now you've got this person playing Connect Four and this person. Using the keyboard, obviously, um, now that I think about it, the sound might be a bit annoying if, if they're both uh, interjecting with each other. But, you know, cool, right? All right, so I think I have demonstrated the productivity as much as I can. Um, a, lot, a bunch of different random stuff there. But yeah, let's move on to the next section, which is gaming. So let's remind ourselves what this thing is running. We've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H processor running at 2.5 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it's two 3K touchscreen displays. Unfortunately, however, though, there is no dedicated graphics card. Although it has, you know, decent CPU performance, its GPU is nothing to, to rave about. And I'm gonna kind of try and demonstrate that with the gaming. Now, gaming has been possible. First of all, get something not too heavy, and that's Fortnite. Like I said, this is a uh, Windows PC, works really well with the Xbox controller. So, um, like you can see, this is Fortnite. This is the default kind of settings. Uh, and you can see frame rate is really low. You know, barely going above 20. That is kind of what you'd expect, really. Um, well, actually, no, it's not what you'd expect. I didn't really expect it to be this bad, but it, you, you, you can adjust it. So when you go into the settings and you have a fiddle around um, with, the, with the graphics and kind of lower those a little bit, you can get a much better, much smoother gameplay. So as you can see now, with a bit of lower graphics, uh, you're hitting the 50 frames per second. And actually it's going, it's going, well it's actually it's reaching 100 frames per second. Um, so 
you can drastically improve it. It does still lag a little bit, but it's usable. So next we can try something maybe a little bit more graphically intense and that's Hogwarts Legacy. But yeah, so as you can see, so currently uh, my settings are set to low and medium and it's all right. I mean, the graphics are good enough. It doesn't really jutter or lag too much. <clears throat> You'll get the occasional frame drop every now and again. Um, but overall, you know, it, it's okay and the shadows are great, the lighting is great. So even though these are set to probably the lower graphic settings, it still looks it still looks really good and it's definitely playable. We can try and go through the settings, just change them all to medium and high, just to see how it affects the gameplay. Uh, and as you can probably tell already, way more dropping frames, much more laggy. Uh, in a game like this, where you have to be quick if you're fighting an opponent and things like that, it's, it's just it just ruins the gameplay. It's, to be honest, in terms of the actual graphics, I can't immediately tell much of a difference. Uh, maybe in the reflections they're more detailed and in the shadows are more detailed. Generally, generally, it doesn't really affect the gameplay, it doesn't really affect the experience of the game that much if you play at, at a bit of a lower graphic setting. Um, so I'm going to change it back because, you know, it's not really playable that well uh, in this current in this current setting. But it's something to think about. If you are a gamer, if or if that's at least a large part of what you want to do on a laptop, you need to go for something with a dedicated graphics and chip. So although I'm going to continue gaming on this PC in the way that I am at the moment, it's very light in the sense that I don't spend hours and hours on it every day um, and it's not a huge part of what I what I need to do on this laptop. So it wasn't my priority. But if the productivity rating was 10 out of 10, get the gaming rating is probably going to be about 3 out of 10. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about with you guys is the pen. So this is Asus's Pen 2. It comes with the box, which is great. Uh, what I love about it is actually, I think I mentioned it when I did the unboxing. This is one of the only pens, or the only pen I've ever come across, that has these inter interchangeable pen nibs, but they're not replacements necessarily. They're actually just different levels of softness. So they've got uh, H, HB, B, and uh, 2H. Now, personally, when I'm writing on um, like a digital screen, like a hard glass screen, I prefer the nib to be quite soft because I don't like how, for example, like the Apple Pencil, I don't like how it makes a very like tappy tappy noise. So, so it's great that you can kind of choose your preference here and there's good variation. Now, Asus do say that it has 4,096 pressure levels, not very heavy, and it's got a, quite importantly, a 266 hertz uh, sampling rate. So you don't want to see that lag uh, when you're writing. Uh, so it's a mixture between uh, the pen and the kind of the software as well as the device that need to work together because uh, also the screen refresh rate has to be high enough for you to be able to notice that, that difference as well. Okay, so moving on to how it actually looks. So the pen is, it's made of plastic, but it's, it's got this nice matte finish to it, it does feel nice. It's got three buttons to it, so it's got these top and down buttons here. One of them is defaulted to like selecting something and the other one's defaulting to erasing something. Then you have this button here at the top, which is a shortcut button. Uh, at the moment it's shortcutted to opening like a little note, but I'll show you how to remap these as well. Uh, the, one of the major differences between Asus Pen 1 and Asus Pen 2 is how you recharge it. The other one was a AAA battery. This one is a USB Type-C port, hides away. I actually quite like the design of that. If you go to the Windows settings, you can see that you're able to then customize what you want to do. So for example, um, are you left or right handed? and I can choose what I want uh, that, that shortcut button to do. A single click is currently set to quick notes, but you can set it to do nothing, to a screen snip, uh, which might be quite useful actually. Uh, and you can set it to open a specific application. And then double click, we can leave it open as OneNote. So now we're ready to actually test out the pen. It is also worth mentioning, just before I test out the actual handwriting of the pen, the great thing about this is actually you can also use it uh, to do other things like go through PowerPoint slides. So as you can see, once you're in a PowerPoint, you can flick through it with uh, with this top button here, which is really cool. I wish it had like a stylus pointer. I mean, that's asking a bit too much. All right, so anyway, let's let's get to actually trying to test this out as a note-taking application. So we can remove our digital keyboard. Let's get out of that completely. Double tap to open our OneNote shortcut, and there we go. Now, unfortunately, what I've found in general when I've tried other kind of pens on Windows devices is that it's not really the pen that's the limiting factor here. It's often 
Windows applications. A lot of them tend to you know, have pen input incorporated into them. They just don't run as smoothly as the tablet applications that are designed for writing with a stylus. So one is a popular note-taking one and it does have good inbuilt uh, pen support. So you've got a highlighter and you've got different pens that you can save. You can also get a bit of a sense of the pressure support. So um, if I just barely touch the screen, you can see how light the pen is versus if I press really hard on the screen, you can see how much that picks up. Now, like I said, the top one is a select, so you can quickly lasso your whatever you've written, move it across, that's great. Uh, and then also the bottom one is the eraser, so I should be able to just erase it all. So now let's test out the palm rejection, because that's what's really important. What you don't, you don't want to lean your hand and suddenly start clicking a lot of things. And this is where stuff starts to happen. So I just tend to find that palm rejection isn't as good. When I put my palm on the, on the screen, it highlights this image here. It's not picking up the fact that my pen's touching the screen, let me not pick up any other, other inputs. Once my pen is on it, it doesn't really select that. But realistically, most people, they leave their palm, then they touch them with their pen. And that's why I'm selecting the image first. And that just becomes a little bit annoying. Um, so personally, I'm not a huge fan of writing a lot on OneNote on their desktop version. But it's definitely good, for example, if you've got a paper like here and I just want to highlight parts of it. I think that would be, it, it, it's definitely excellent for making those quick notes, quick annotations, drawing something on it. But actually, because it's such a large screen, you do need a place to put your hand. And that's just, especially because I'm left-handed, it just bothers me, okay? But I want to kind of show you guys that it is mainly the application's fault because there is an, another Microsoft application and that's their journal. So this is Microsoft's journal application. This is a good demonstration or a better demonstration of a Windows application specifically or largely designed for, for pen input. And it does work really well. So uh, I can, as you can see, I'm comfortably leaning my hand on it. The bad handwriting is not the pen's fault. That's just, that's just my left-handed genes. What this pen doesn't seem to have though is like a tilt sort of functionality. So it doesn't seem to detect if I'm writing something like this or if I'm writing it slanted. If you've seen any of my other previous note-taking note -taking videos and I test out the pen functionality of what I had at the time, which was the Tab S6, uh, that pen was able to detect tilt. So it made thicker lines when I wrote like this and thinner lines when I wrote, when I wrote it like that. Now this might just be an application thing but from what i recall i didn't see that as a feature um on asus's uh, website also this application doesn't seem to have pressure support either but that's not too much of an issue i mean it kind of makes it up for in, in so many other ways because you can do so many things for example like it's because it's connected to your like your your microsoft account uh, so you can actually add people it was actually an amazing feature uh, you can scribble to erase you can also do all the standard things of like holding creating images. You can actually even uh, star things. So for example, if I start this section here, it comes up as a little star there and I can tick that. And what it does, that means if I go to this section here, I can quickly navigate between my, my text well, in this case, it's just scribbles. This is a really cool application, although this video is not designed to be reviewing note-taking apps on Microsoft. That is a future video that I do have in mind, so let me know if that's something you'll be interested in. It's mainly just to look at the possibilities or the capabilities of the pen that it comes with. So what I would say is the pen is comfortable to use. You definitely have good customization with the nib choice. It definitely has good sensitivity to pressure. Doesn't seem to have any of the tilt sensitivities for a free pen that comes in the box. It's useful. Now, what you just have to make sure is, is that you're finding an application that is right for you and that has good pen support on Microsoft. Anyway, guys, I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. It's not a full, what every single feature that you can do on this laptop. I don't think any person can test everything, but I've tried to make it as real and day in the life as possible. But otherwise, that's it from me. I will magnetize this back on. That's still my favorite feature. And I'll see you on the next TK Tech video.